Hello. Happy March 30th, 2020. Our first day back from spring break and an e-learning day because we are still in quarantine. Our economy is most definitely sliding into a recession. And so we're going to talk about a microeconomic model that deals with uh, one of the symptoms of a recession. So I'll invite you to get a pencil and take this down. This is the model. And now that you can see it, feel free to go back and pause and take it down and all that. We can talk about it without me having to hold that up again. Um, so you'll notice the axes are W and L. It's the labor market. Uh, you'll notice there was not an equilibrium wage. The wage that was indicated there was above the equilibrium wage. That above equilibrium wage is either a price ceiling or a price floor. And the fact that there are two quantities on the horizontal axis indicates there's either a surplus or a shortage. Take a moment, take a look at what you've drawn, and see which one we're looking at here. Which of these four possibilities? Is this a floor with a surplus, a floor with a shortage, a ceiling with a surplus, or a ceiling with a shortage? Ponder. Did you say floor with a surplus? I did. And I'm pretty sure that's right. Because um, that's what happens. If you have a price floor in the labor market, uh, the quantity of labor supplied at that high wage is larger than the quantity of labor demanded at that wage. And so there is more labor asking for jobs than there are worker, uh, employers wanting to hire. Now, an important thing about this model is though you only see two agencies there, there could be a third. So we definitely have the households and the firms. The households are the suppliers of labor. The firms are the demanders of labor. This is the marginal revenue product curve that is that demand curve for labor. Uh, that supply curve is upward sloping because of the law of diminishing marginal utility. And in this case, we're talking about the uh, utility of foregone leisure. leisure. So if uh, the more someone works, the less time they have to deal with the non-work things they have to do, and therefore the more valuable their uh, non-work time. Anyway, um, all of that's old news. First question uh, for today, simple one paragraph. It's about the subscript on the W. There are three choices for the letters that are going to go there in the mo uh, models that we're going to look at. It's all the same picture, just a question of whether we label that with an E, with an M, or with a U. Now the E, I'll spoil the suspense for you right now, stands for efficiency. The M has to do with the fact that one of the agents that we have in this model is neither households nor firms, it's actually the government. Um, the other one is a U, and a U is because the households don't have to be completely isolated things. They can bind together to create some market power. They can form effectively a cartel and act as if they are some sort of a monopoly selling labor power. So the question I have for you is, why are those subscripts U and M? Uh, write up your thoughts on that, and tomorrow we'll answer that and talk about what the E actually is. So there was assignment one, assignment for March 30th, due March 31st at noon. Uh, check in by then, there'll be another video talking about uh, the answer to this, uh, this M and U question, and then the meaning of the E. Thank you, and have a great day.